did you know that geologists might be able to tell where you went on vacation just by analysing the sand stuck in your backpack? And without ever actually seeing that sand? What are you going to do that day, Stone? X-ray diffraction. A method that uses a so-called XRD scanner. You put in finely ground soil and sand samples, and it returns a graph like this. Apparently, such a diffractogram reveals exactly what minerals are inside the sample. Online mineral libraries containing data on over 10,000 different minerals can help to identify what's there. The elements that show up depend on the environmental conditions the sand has been exposed to. Arjan Dijkstra is an earth materials specialist, meaning he creates a lot of these scans. Typically 100 a year, so, so not, not, not huge numbers, but I've also seen lots of these scans that other people collected. Yeah, often students come to me with, with scans. Let's just say crazy numbers. So here's the real test. Has he become a living version of the mineral library? One that can not only identify the minerals, but actually determine where they came from. Interesting challenge, yeah. That's what we're about to find out in this series. Let's go. Okay. In this episode, Tom's holiday to some picturesque place takes an unexpected turn when the deep orange sand sneaks into his camera bag and follows him home. The sand has been ground and put through the XRD. Now we're ready to present Aryan with its diffractogram. Can he deduce Tom's holiday destination from it? I don't think this is very difficult. I see quartz here. Almost all the peaks here correspond to quartz. And that's not a surprise. Because if you imagine that you have some mountains like uh, the Alps, you've got lots of rocks there which have different minerals in them. Uh, imagine that you have a granite, very typical rock in mountain belts. There's lots of different minerals in here. There's quartz in here. These white ones are feldspars. These dark ones are micas. But when this rock weathers, so it falls apart in little bits, um, a lot of these minerals are not very stable and they, they start to alter. And most of these minerals in a rock like this become clay minerals. Then that material is transported down uh, the mountains by rivers and ends up on a, on, a, on a beach somewhere maybe, or gets transported further to seas. Actually, the only mineral that survives intact is quartz. Quartz is a super robust mineral. All the others become clay minerals. And if we think about beaches, all the clay minerals are washed away from beaches by the action of waves and only sand remains, or if you have a very, very uh, energetic beach with big waves, then even the sand is washed away and you just have pebbles or, or cobbles. So most beaches consist of quartz. And that's what we see here. We see many sharp peaks and they are all of quartz. That means we're on a beach somewhere quite far away from uh, mountains because all the other minerals that were maybe present in the rocks have been altered, have been changed to clay minerals. They're washed away. Any student who ever uses XRD should recognize the big peak just before 27 of quartz. And if the other one and just beyond 20 is there, then quartz. And then, you know, there's a heap of little peaks that come at, at higher angles. I do see one peak, though, that doesn't correspond to quartz. That's at just to the right hand of 30 degrees. There is a little peak there that doesn't belong to quartz. I don't see any other peaks that, that that don't belong to quartz. Uh, so if, I just, if there's just one peak around 30, then I think there is some uh, a carbonate mineral in there. And if it's indeed on the right hand side of 30, just above 30, I think it's dolomite. So I think quartz with a very small amount of dolomite in there, which is, which is interesting because um, modern organi organisms in the sea don't make dolomites, so it's not shells of, or hardly ever make dolomites, it's not shell fragments here. Where does the dolomite come from? Dolomite is a, a carbonate mineral like calcite. I think it came from a rock. So a lot of desert sand has a little bit of dolomite in it. A lot of desert environments have limestones exposed and they weather and they, they produce little grains of carbonate. So I think, I think that's maybe what, what, what happened here. Um, that's difficult, quite difficult to say, right? but quartz, quartz sand. <laughs>
Uh, what else do you know about this sand? Do you have uh, any hints? <laughs> of course, we weren't going to give him a hint, but we were interested in his guess as to which holiday destination this sand came from. If you needed to guess. Uh, Saudi Arabia. <laughs> Or, or maybe Australia or something like that. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> and it's not a, not a Dutch beach, I would think, with the dolomite. <laughs> All right, Saudi Arabia or Australia? So put it in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, nice red sand, right? I just identified quartz there and a little bit of dolomite, but um, yeah, a sand with only quartz and dolomite would be um, white. This is clearly not white. <laughs> That's not uncommon, right? That the iron mineral here is, is forming a coating on the quartz grain, um, may actually be not very uh, abundant, actually maybe very little of it and just not enough to be uh, detected by, by X-ray diffraction. X-ray fluorescence as a method is then a, a good way to complement that because then we get information on the on the elements present and we would see we would see iron if that's the the cause of this redness right um, it is it is a rusty red right there are also minerals that can be red so some sands have garnet in them look I'm a geologist right hand lens geologists do two things they uh, if they, if they have rocks, they lick them, right? Because that tells you something about the grain size. I'm not going to do that with sand. And, and hand lens, that's a rusty red color and it sits on all the grains. It's not that there are some red grains and uh, some, some other colored grains. So, so it's a coating on the, on the quartz grains, right? And, and XRD didn't really show that. So you said Saudi Arabia. Yeah. You mentioned Australia. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, now you, now we've seen the color. Uh, that's it's Australian sand. It's, yeah. He may not have gotten the exact location right, but his analysis of the diffractogram was spot on. Besides, he mentioned Australia as one of the two options. Let's award him this challenge. Next time, we'll see if Ariane can deduce where this black sand came from based on its diffractogram only. If you're curious to find out, join us again next time.